As you're doing your network troubleshooting, do you have a handful of troubleshooting commands that you almost always use? I know I certainly do. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace. I'm a double CCIE, and in this video, I want to share with you three go-to commands to help you not only with troubleshooting, but also with cybersecurity. And those commands are netstat, where we can see open connections on a device, We'll take a look at the NS lookup utility, great for troubleshooting DNS issues, and the very powerful TCP dump utility, which allows us to do a packet capture from the command line and even output that packet capture to a file, which we can open up inside of Wireshark. We'll talk about the theory of each command. I'll give you a demo of each command. And by the way, these three commands are taken from three separate videos that I've done in a course that I'm currently developing. I'm developing a course to get you ready for the CCST cybersecurity exam from Cisco. And that course is scheduled to be out in May of 2025. And if you're currently a member of our All Access Pass, great news, that course is going to just magically show up in your library when it's released in May of 2025. If you're not yet a member of the All Access Pass, I invite you to check it out. Just go to kwtrain.com slash all hyphen access. It's a yearly subscription, and we currently have over 30 courses in that membership library, and we're adding a couple of cybersecurity courses this year. And right now we have courses on enterprise, cloud, collaboration, cybersecurity, your career. So if you enjoy this training, I encourage you to go check out the All Access Pass. Again, it's kwtrain.com slash all hyphen access. Now, let's jump into these three powerful CLI commands. In this video, let's consider the netstat command. And netstat is short for network statistics and it's a utility that's available on most of our operating systems. However, the options that we give after the netstat command, those might vary from one operating system to another. So we might want to use the operating system's built-in help feature to get more information about the specific options supported on that operating system. But as you see on screen, it can give us information about all of our current connections on a system, including the port numbers used on those connections as well as the connection state. And here in a few moments, we'll take a look at some common connection states and then go out to a live interface and issue some netstat commands. But from a cybersecurity perspective, why might we use this? Well, the netstat command is useful for identifying unauthorized connections. Maybe we see a system is listening on port 80. That might mean that a malicious party could connect into the system using a web browser, and we might not want that. Now let's consider some of the common connection states that we might see. First up is the listen state. We often see this on a server or in a system that's going to be receiving requests to open up a session. And this listen connection state says that a process is waiting for an inbound connection request on a specific port. For example, maybe we're listening on port 443 if we're a secure web server. Another connection state that we often see is established. This means that two-way communication has been established between this system and a remote system, and the TCP three-way handshake has been completed. Another connection state we might see is closed hyphen wait. This means that a FIN message has been received from the other side of the connection because they're wanting to tear down this connection. Now we need to send our own FIN message. And let's say that both sides have sent their FIN message, but we're not quite closed yet. Well, we might see a closing connection state, and here we're just waiting for the final acknowledgement message or the ACK message from the other side saying, okay, I got your FIN, let's close down the connection. And then once the connection is closed on both sides, then the connection state will show as closed. And as you examine the help screen for the netstat command in your operating system, you might see a variety of options that you can give. But here are some common ones we might use on Microsoft Windows. And I'll go out and demonstrate this for you live here in just a moment. But we might use the netstat minus A option, and that's going to show us all of our connections on this system. However, some of those connections might identify the other side of the connection by a host name or a DNS name. If we would prefer to see IP address information rather than host name or DNS name information, we could add an N after the A, where we're typing in netstat hyphen AN, and that's going to display our address in numerical form rather than seeing a host name or a DNS name. Or maybe we just want to see all of the current TCP connections. We could say netstat 
hyphen P and then give the protocol of TCP and that will filter the output to just show us TCP connections. Now let's go out to live Microsoft Windows interface and see what happens when we issue these commands. Here we're sitting at a command prompt on Microsoft Windows 11 and I'm going to say netstat and we need to give a space after that and we'll say hyphen or minus A. And this is going to show us our current connections. But notice that some of these connection names are showing up as host names or DNS names. If we don't want to see that, we could say instead netstat space minus a n and that's going to show all those host names and dns names in numerical form in other words we see ip address information rather than name information and also notice that we've got several tcp based connections and several udp based connections if i just want to see the tcp connections i could say netstat space minus p for protocol and say tcp and this is going to show me just TCP connections. And as one other example, let's do a netstat space minus O. This is going to give us the process ID of the process on our system that's using this network connection. Here we see the PID or the process ID column, and this identifies the process that's using this particular network connection. And that's a look at the netstat command. When we point our web browser to a web server, typically we don't enter the IP address of that web server, we enter its DNS name. And we're pointing to some sort of a DNS server that can translate that easy to remember domain name into a corresponding IP address, which can be routed through the network. And attackers oftentimes try to compromise our DNS servers so that when we go to something like kwtrain.com, we might be redirected to a lookalike site. And when we log in, maybe the attacker is capturing our login credentials. And to help us troubleshoot and investigate any sort of DNS issue, we can use the NS Lookup Utility. That's short for Name Server Lookup, and it's available on most of our operating systems, and it's going to perform for us domain name queries. It can check regular A records, IP version 4 address records, quad A records for IP version 6 addresses. It can check the MX or the mail server records, and it's going to help us identify any misconfigurations or compromises in our DNS configuration. And from a cybersecurity perspective, it's going to help us identify if our queries are being redirected to a trusted site or to a suspicious site. Now let's go out to a Microsoft Windows prompt and take a look at how we can use the NS Lookup Utility. Here we're sitting at the command prompt on a Microsoft Windows system. And if I say NS Lookup, and I'll give the website of kwtrain.com, and I want to look that up. I want to translate that into its corresponding IP address or addresses. Notice that Microsoft Windows comes back and says, here are the IP version 6 addresses, here are the IP version 4 addresses that kwtrain.com might be resolved into. And we can see that my local system is using a DNS server of 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And uh, that's a publicly available DNS server that's provided by Google. But let's say that I just wanted to see the A records. Those are the IP version 4 address records. What I can do is say ns lookup space minus type. And I can specify the type of DNS record that I want to query. And I'll say minus type equals A for the A records. And that's for the domain name of kwtrain.com. And you'll notice that this only returns IP version 4 addresses, not IP version 6 addresses. If I wanted to see the quad A records, which would be the IP version 6 addresses, I could say that the type equals AAAA. And here we have those IP version 6 addresses. Or let's say I wanted to take a look at the mail server or the MX records for kwtrain.com. We could say that the type of DNS record equals MX. And this shows us a listing of Google email servers that kwtrain.com uses. And that's a look at the NS Lookup Utility, which can be super valuable in cybersecurity as we're trying to determine if our DNS configuration has been compromised or not. Let's consider in this video the TCP Dump Utility. 
That is a utility that we can execute from uh, the command line on many of our Unix and Linux operating system platforms, and it's going to do packet capture for us. Let's say, for example, this Linux client on screen is sending traffic out to the internet, and we want to get some insight into those packets. What we could do is tell TCP dump to monitor that specific interface. And when packets come out of that Linux client now, those packets could be displayed on screen, or we could redirect that to a file. But if we capture everything, that could be an overwhelming amount of output on our screen, so we can apply filters. For example, we could say only capture packets going to or coming from port 443. And if we choose to display the output on the screen, we can see that output in real time. But I think one of the most useful features of TCP dump is that we can output what we're capturing to a file. And then we can open up that file in a program called Wireshark. And we'll take a look at Wireshark in a moment, but Wireshark is going to be a freely available traffic analysis tool that is very powerful. Now, from a cybersecurity perspective, why might we want to use TCP dump? Well, as a couple of examples, if we've had a security incident occur and we're responding to that incident, we could gather information very quickly using TCP dump, and we could also use TCP dump in threat hunting scenarios. Now, let's back up for a second and take a closer look at Wireshark, because oftentimes this is going to be used in tandem with TCP dump. It's a very popular network protocol analyzer, and it is freely available. And it's going to be supported on just about any operating system. And I'll give you some links on screen for where you can download it for free for Microsoft Windows, for Mac OS, or if you're using Linux, you can install that using the Linux Package Manager. And I'll give you a couple of syntax examples for a couple of different versions of Linux, Ubuntu and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But just check the Wireshark documentation for your particular distribution of Linux. But Wireshark, it's got three primary tasks. Number one is to capture traffic, much like TCP dump is doing. We can say, I want to capture traffic on this specific interface. And then once I've captured that traffic, we can display the captured packets. And we can see the capture file in three different sections. We can see a list of the packets, the source, the destination, the protocol used. We can see some details about that packet, what's in the layer two header, what's in the layer three header, and so on. And we can even examine the contents of the bytes in that packet. And to make the packets we're interested in more easy to find, we can apply various filters to say, just show me specific traffic types. For example, here I'm saying, show me just UDP port 53, which is used for DNS. And the reason we're bringing up Wireshark here in our TCP dump discussion is we're going to see how to take TCP dump and output a file that can be opened up and analyzed within Wireshark. And there's quite a bit of syntax available for TCP dump. And you can use its help feature to get more information on that. But let me give you some basic examples, and then we'll go out and do this in a live interface. If I just want to capture all packets on an interface and see those packets on screen, I could say TCP dump space minus I space and give the interface identifier, such as EN0. If I want to narrow that down just a bit and only see output for traffic coming from or destined for port 443, then I could add on the argument of port 443. Or if I wanted the flexibility to go back and analyze that content in Wireshark, I could say I want to write to a file. We could say minus W and specify a file name. Here I'm specifying a file name called capture.pcap, and that's a file format that we could open up inside of Wireshark. Now let's go out to a live interface and let's try some of these commands. And I'm going to be doing this in Mac OS. And in Mac OS, I need more than just basic user privileges to run the TCP dump command. So I need to preface my TCP dump command with sudo, which is super user do. I'm saying run this as a super user, and I'll be prompted for the administrative password to give me permission to do this. So let's say sudo TCP dump. Let's specify the interface by saying space minus i. And here on my system, I'm going to be using interface en0. And when I press enter, I'm prompted for the password. And uh, you see it's capturing all traffic, and it's a lot. Let me break out of this. And if I wanted to filter that down a bit, I could qualify this by saying, only show me traffic using port 443. And in the background, I will reload a secure web page to generate some traffic. I'll break out of that. It's still quite a bit. 
And as one final example, let's say that I want to output this to a file. I'll say minus W for write, and I'll specify a file name. I'll say capture.pcap. So let's enter that, and I'll reload a web page in the background again. We can break out of that. Now in the background, I'm going to open up Wireshark and load in this file that we just wrote to. Now here we are inside of Wireshark where I have opened up that PCAP file that we created with the TCP dump utility. And from here, I could start doing more analysis and filtering. So TCP dump, that is a great utility that we can use from the command line. After all, we might not always have the luxury of having a graphical interface where we can run the graphical version of Wireshark, but if we've got a command line, we can say TCP dump and start capturing traffic in real time.